Hi, I'm Tony, and you're watching Delicious TV Totally Vegetarian. On today's show, we're going to make chickpea crepes, roasted butternut squash with cauliflower, chickpea leek soup with lots of parsley, and roasted chickpeas. My first recipe is chickpea crepes, and that's based on one of my favorite foods from Italy, which is called torta or farinata, which is a chickpea cake that's baked in an oven. And there's really nothing to it, just like this, very, very easy. Chickpea flour, water, olive oil, and um, that's about it, a little bit of salt. And over there they bake it in wood-fired ovens and just serve it with black pepper, and it's absolutely delicious, and it's impossible for me to recreate. And this is as close as I can get to that flavor, that just really rich, savory flavor that I love so much out of this. Now, this recipe that we're going to make for these crepes can be used either in a savory way, in other words, you can fill it with vegetables or tofu, whatever you want to put in it, or we can also use it as a dessert. First thing you need is garbanzo bean flour, which is chickpea flour. So it's rarely ever labeled chickpea flour, usually it was garbanzo, so look for that. It's a little yellow, it looks like a very, very fine cornmeal flour. You're gonna need about a cup of this, not even about, you'll need a cup. And a cup of white bread flour, unbleached, whatever it is that you have bread flour, not self-rising. I use about a half a teaspoon, which is not easy for me because I like a lot of salt, of salt. And you'll need this even if you're gonna use this as a dessert because you always need salt in order to complement the sweet. And then it's a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of sesame oil. Now the sesame oil is the difference between this recipe and the Mediterranean or Southern French recipe. You would just use maybe a lighter vegetable oil for this and it should work out just as well. But the sesame really gives it a nice taste when you're serving this with vegetables. I've got everything in my mixing bowl. All I need to add now is three and a half cups of water. Not too cold, not too hot. So just tepid water works fine. And then just whisk it in. Now this is a crepe batter, so it's going to be thin. So don't, don't panic, it's right if it looks thin. So we're gonna get this all whisked up. We're gonna to have to run this through a little strainer in order to get out um, some of the, the lumps that develop, and, which is very typical in, uh, in, with chickpea flour. You've probably had it frequently if you eat at Indian restaurants. They use chickpea flour a lot. They use it, in fact, to bread a lot of their uh, food where we would use white flour. And it's, it's nice, it just adds a different dimension. Another layer of flavor. Okay, that's good. Now I'm just gonna run it through a little strainer just to, you can see all these little lumps that have formed on here. We're gonna get those right out. That's it, the batter is ready. If you can let your batter sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, a half an hour, and even stores very well overnight, it, it works out best. So I have a previously made batch and it's been sitting for about a half an hour, 40 minutes, so it should, should be perfect and my pan is nice and hot. So I think this is about maybe a, a little over a quarter of a cup, between a quarter and a third of a cup. Okay, so we pour it in, and now you just have to move it. You gotta fill in those little holes, there we go. There's also a rule, the first one never works. It's like a food law, like pancakes. Okay, this particular dish, the one that I was talking about, the, uh, the torta, goes really all the way up from the Ligurian coast, which is about halfway up the coast going to the, the north toward southern France, that north-south thing. But um, in the region of Liguria, it gets a little bit thicker than it does where I come from in Livorno, and they call it farinata. So it's more like a cake versus the torta, which is thinner, torta also meaning cake. But when it's, you're using it with chickpea, it's a little bit different. Then when you get into southern France, it's called panis, and they add different sorts of herbs and spices to it. So it's kind of the same thing, and you can just see, you know, historically how it's changed going up the coast, depending on what's available. And um, so you can go to parts of Italy, you can go to the Adriatic side, you can go down south, you can go to Rome, and you'll never find this. They just don't, they just don't eat it down there really that way. So it's very, it's like a very regional comfort food, and it is unbelievable. It's just, and when I describe it to people, you know, when you're describing the ingredients, they, you know, it's like, yeah, that sounds really exciting, but it's so good, and these are so good. And a lot of times I'll just make these, you know, if I wanna make a mock torta because I can't bust the secret on, on doing it, 
Um, I'll just make these crepes, fold them over, drizzle a little olive oil on just a little bit, and lots of uh, cracked black pepper. And it's wonderful even in between two slices of bread like a sandwich. It's just really, really good. So uh, I hope you like this recipe. I, I love it. It's just a really flexible uh, recipe, and, and it's just healthy on top of it, which is nice. That's always an added bonus. So let's take a look. Most of the cooking is done on the, the pan side now, so when I turn it, it's just very brief. We don't need to cook it for the same amount of time. And again, depending on your, uh, your stove and your pan, the time, the cooking time is a little variable. I'll give it a quick flip. It's not sticking. That's always a good sign. All right, so we're just going to get the other side done for maybe 30, 40 seconds. Turn it out. On my last trip to Italy, uh, when I went to Rome, took uh, my son to Rome, we were walking around the streets at night. You have a lot of crepe vendors. And what they make, and he loves this and this stuff is great, is uh, the Italians make a chocolate hazelnut spread. And that's what I grew up with for peanut butter. And at night they make these crepes and spread this on the crepe and then sprinkle it with powdered sugar. And it's dessert, way lighter than ice cream or cake or whatever. But boy, you get that nice chocolate punch. So I'm going to make one because I love this stuff. So you just take your crepe and spread it. And if they're warm, it spreads even easier. Just spread some of this around. And you, you don't need a lot of it, which is what's nice. And then just fold it to a triangle. A little bit of powdered sugar. And voila, you have a very light, very tasty, healthy dessert in minutes. For recipes from today's show, please visit our website at deliciousTV.com. To order a DVD of this episode, send $9.95 to Delicious TV Garbanzo episode. P.O. Box 7835, Portland, Maine, 04112.